Well, hello and welcome to this week's assembly. Uh, we're recording this assembly on Wednesday the 27th of January, which is Holocaust Memorial Day. It's an opportunity for us to remember the awesome events that took place in the last war, when some six million Jews and uh, various other minority groups were mercilessly persecuted and murdered by the Nazi regime in Germany and various other parts of Europe. There are all kinds of stories that have emerged from uh, that period of time and uh, over the years the grammar school has been privileged to have uh, visits from survivors and uh, also uh, we've heard many stories from that time. The theme this year is light shining in the darkness. And uh, there's one particular story that I wasn't familiar with uh, that I've been really inspired to learn about. That is the story of the White Rose Movement. Within Germany uh, in the 1940s, uh, a very small movement arose that was led by university students in the University of Munich. And in 1942, Hans and Sophie Scholl, Christoph Prost, and various others, students, and at least one staff member, were responsible for writing and distributing various pamphlets, a total of six in all, which uh, four of which were simply titled White Rose, and uh, they were written in order to draw attention to the terrible things that were happening to the German people as a result of the Nazi war machine. Two of those students had in fact been uh, involved in the Hitler Youth and had been enthusiastic supporters along with almost everyone else of Adolf Hitler and all that he stood for. But it was only after a period of time that first the Scholl parents and then a variety of other people began to realise what was actually happening. They realised that uh, as war broke out, to speak out against the regime was a terribly dangerous thing to do. And uh, for around about a year, from 1942 to 1943, they were able to uh, distribute these leaflets very, very secretly and uh, asked those who received the leaflets to distribute them and uh, circulate them again and uh, further uh, so that more and more people could hear the message. Unfortunately, uh, eventually they were discovered and uh, in February 1943, um, Hans and Sophie and Christoph Prost were taken by the Gestapo and subjected to a kind of show trial and were convicted of treason and condemned to death. Only a few hours later, after very moving farewells that Hans and Sophie had with their parents, Christoph Pross never got to say goodbye to his wife and family. They were all executed. As Sophie Scholl had her deeply moving farewell to her parents, them all trying to control their emotions at such an extreme time. Her mother said, remember Jesus. It was in large part because of their Christian convictions that they believed it was right to speak out, even though it was at such great personal risk. Sophie replied, yes, you too, remember Jesus. It's not hard to think why they said that. Because it was Jesus himself, as a Jew, who stood in a public place and said, I am the light of the world. Christians all over the world remember Jesus all of these years later as the light who shines in the darkness. But what we may not remember quite so readily is 
that Jesus said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. It's a really extraordinary thing. We may be happy to accept that, yes, Jesus, the greatest moral teacher we believe who ever lived, the only human being who ever lived a, a completely sinless life, the one who is uh, God incarnate, God in the flesh. It may not be so hard for us to realize that Jesus said, I am the light of the world, but it might be surprising to realize that he said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. In other words, as they followed his example, and as they obeyed his command, the idea is that they were to shine in the darkness and make a difference as his witnesses, as his followers, as his ambassadors. Now what that means for us today is that thankfully, though we don't live in anything like the terrible, terrible, severely pressurised circumstances that uh, the Scholl brother and sister and uh, Christoph Prost and others experienced in Germany in the last war. However, there are, of course, always situations when it's much more convenient and much easier to say nothing, not to speak out against injustice, inequality or wrong. When it's easier just to go with the tide of public opinion and uh, be swept along with all the other fish, it's much harder to swim upstream, to stand up and be different and to speak out when everyone else seems too afraid to open their mouths. I admit that I've not always had anything like the courage of those young people. Sophie was only 21 at the time, her brother 24. But I find them so inspiring that I trust that not just on Holocaust Memorial Day, but throughout the year, I'll remember to be a light in the darkness. I want to encourage you also to do the same, to be prepared to be different and to stand up for what you know and believe to be right. Let's pray. Lord, at the time of this global pandemic, when there seems to be so much darkness, sadness and difficulty, we pray that you'd enable us to be light, shining though we may feel small and insignificant, shining nonetheless, giving hope, bearing witness, standing up for truth and justice and righteousness. Give us courage for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, thank you so much. God bless.